Does money truly bring happiness, or is it a mere illusion that we've all been led to believe? This question has sparked countless conversations and triggered extensive research. The relationship between money and happiness is complex, multifaceted, and far from straightforward. Economists, psychologists, and philosophers have all taken a crack at unraveling this intricate knot. They've conducted study after study, probing and questioning, trying to decipher the enigma that is human happiness and its connection to wealth. The results? Well, they're as varied as they are intriguing. Some findings propose a direct correlation between wealth and contentment, while others suggest that the equation isn't quite so simple. This inconsistency has given birth to an eternal debate, a seesaw of opinions and theories that sway back and forth, each one attempting to capture the elusive truth. But as we delve deeper into these studies, let's remember that every individual's perception of happiness is unique, making this exploration all the more intriguing. Researchers have been trying to untangle the intricate web of money and happiness for years. Now, let's take a closer look at these studies and what they've discovered. One of the most quoted studies in this area is from Princeton University, which found a strong correlation between income and emotional well-being. However, this relationship plateaued at an annual income of around $75,000. In other words, more money did increase happiness, but only up to a point. On the flip side, a study from the University of Cambridge argued that how people spend their money is more important than how much they earn. They found that spending money on experiences rather than material possessions leads to higher levels of happiness. Then, there's the Harvard Business School study, which took a different perspective. They suggested that individuals who spent their money on others or donated to charity reported higher levels of happiness compared to those who spent on themselves. On a broader scale, a global study conducted by Gallup found that while wealthier nations are generally happier, there are numerous exceptions. For example, despite having one of the highest GDPs in the world, Japan ranks relatively low in terms of happiness. This suggests that other factors, such as social support and personal freedoms, also play crucial roles in determining happiness. Lastly, a study from San Francisco State University highlighted the role of personal values. They found that individuals who prioritized materialistic pursuits over other life goals were less satisfied and more prone to negative emotions. So we see a spectrum of research, some arguing for a strong connection between money and happiness, and others suggesting that the equation isn't quite that simple. Factors like how you spend your money, where you live, and what you value in life all come into play. So from these studies, it appears that money can buy happiness to an extent, but it isn't the only factor that contributes to our overall well-being. So what can we conclude from this exploration of money and happiness? Well, it's clear that the relationship between the two is complex and multifaceted. Yes, money can provide comfort, security, and open doors to opportunities. It can alleviate stress and provide a cushion for life's unexpected hurdles. However, it's essential to understand that money is not a guaranteed ticket to happiness. It is merely one piece of the puzzle. Other factors play a critical role in our overall well-being. Our health, relationships, personal fulfillment, and sense of purpose are just as vital, if not more so. We must remember that happiness is not a commodity to be bought, but an emotion to be experienced. It lies in the simple joys of life, the love we share, the dreams we chase, and the difference we make. In the end, the pursuit of happiness is a personal journey that goes beyond the confines of our bank accounts.